Today I want us to look at Euclidean geometry. It's called Euclidean geometry because it was discovered by a person called Euclid. Remember, this section was usually in paper three in the olden days, but now it came back in the CATS uh, curriculum to paper two. There are four sections in paper two, and six sections in paper one, and Euclidean is the biggest section with the highest marks out of all the 10 topics we do mathematics in. Kumbula Uti Euclidean geometry up. It originated from just a point. And if you've got this, it is just a point. What happens if we put a group of points together? You've got this point, that point, that point, that point, and you cluster them very close to each other, and we'll end up having something like that, which will refer to it as just a line segment. But if you show a direction, one-sided direction, then another type of uh, a line we get, this is what we call a ray line, a ray, a ray. This is a line segment, that's a point, this is a ray. But what if you've got a line with both directions? This is called just a line. Remember, this is a line, that's a ray, and that's a line segment. There are so many things that we can talk about that will come out of lines. For example, when you've got lines like this, ah, what type of lines are these? These are parallel lines. Geometry works a lot with, with parallel lines, so it is important that you should understand those as well. There are so many things that we can do with those parallel lines. We can try cut them with this line. This line is called a transversal line. This line is called a transversal line. Once we have those lines, there are so many things that we, talk about, we can talk about as well. Remember what happens when you've got a line like this one and another line like this one. Ah. They are joined together at a particular point. And the name of this point is called a vertex, a vertex. Now, this is called an angle. It is formed by two lines that we join them together at a, com at, at a common vertex. Th this is called an angle. But you've got different types of angles. If you go to your Cartesian plane, it will give you those angles easily. Remember that we've got six types of angles. After angles, we'll be talking about triangles. We also have six types of triangles. After triangles, we'll be talking about quadrilaterals. We also have six types of quadrilaterals. You can see the number patterns there. We've got six types of angles. We've got six types of triangles. We also have six types of quadrilaterals. Let's talk about the six types of angles. Remember that angles are measured in degrees. So from here, the, we've not moved an inch, so the angle here is zero degrees. Once we move it up into this quadrant, this is the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. So all angles that are in the first quadrant, we refer to them as acute angles. Acute angles. Acute angle is an angle that is greater than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. After acute angle, the second angle that I want us to talk about is this angle here, which is called a right angle degree, which is called a right angle, which is 90 degrees. So we started from the acute angle, we go to a right angle, which is exactly 90 degrees, perpendicular, 90 degrees. After right angle, we go into the third angle. Remember, this is a right angle, this is an acute angle. We move on to this one, which is above 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. Those types of angles are called obtuse angles. Obtuse, obtuse, obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. Let's recap, we started with acute angle, we move on into right angle, obtuse angle. Then we come to this angle, which is exactly 180 degrees. From here to here, it's 180 degrees. And we call that a straight line, a straight line. It's a straight line. It's a straight line. It's always equals to 180 degrees. So that simple means from here down to here, it's 180 degrees. Or we can even take it from here to here. It is 180 degrees. That's what we call a straight line. After a straight line, if you move from here, either to this quadrant, those angles that come into this quadrant and this quadrant is called a reflex angle. What is a reflex angle? It is greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees. So a reflex angle can either be in the third or the fourth quadrant. How many now that do we have now? Cinema angles are five. Getting an acute, sends a right angle, sends an obtuse angle, sends a straight line, Segura reflex angle, mind you. Then the last one is called the revolution. 
it is equals to 360 degrees. The last one is called the revolution. Right, those are the six types of angles that we have. It's the acute angle, it's an angle that is greater than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. The next one will be the right angle, which is exactly equals to 90 degrees, perpendicular, you indicate it by perpendicular. The next one will be obtuse angle. The obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. After that, we move on to a straight line. This is angle is the angle that is equal to 180 degrees. It's called a straight line. After that, from here, if we, we move into this position, it's called the reflex angle. Then the last one will be the revolution. Right, while talking about angles and lines, there are so many things that we can get out of that, out of angles and lines. If we call this angle one, this one angle two, this one angle three, this one angle four, this one angle five, this one angle six, this one angle seven. Oh, I can call that angle eight, doesn't matter. Right, it is important to note that, let me just have another one this side, so that it will make our lives easier. If these two lines are parallel and they're cut by a transversal line, it is important to note that this angle is equal to that angle, if and only if these two lines are parallel. But these two types of angles are called corresponding angles. It is important to note that even these angles here, this one and this one are also corresponding angles. That one and this one are corresponding angles as well. But those corresponding angles are not equal. These two are corresponding angles and these two are corresponding angles. But these two corresponding angles are equal, but these two corresponding angles are not equal. Why are these equal? Why are these not equal? These are not equal because these two lines are not parallel. These will be equal because these two lines are parallel. All of them, we call them corresponding angles. So what makes the corresponding angles to be equal are parallel lines, so they become important. It is also important to note that this angle here is equal to this angle there. Reason for that, we call them the vertical opposite angles. So if two lines intersect, the vertical opposite angles will always be equal. Remember, if these two are vertical opposite angles and they are the same, and these two will also be equal because they are also vertical opposite angles. When we move on, you can see that this one is the same as this one. Hence, these two are equal. Why are these equal now? They are, remember this, they are inside the parallel line, so we call them interior alternate angles. These two, we refer to them as interior alternate angles, and they will be equal if and only if these two lines are parallel. So in this case, they are equal. Remember, these two are interior alternate angles. This one and this one are interior alternate angles, but they are not equal simply because this line is not equal to that line. But if they were equal, like in this case, then we can simply say, safely say these two are the same because they are interior alternate angles. Likewise, this one will also be equal to this one because these two are also interior alternate angles. It is important that when we do our Euclidean geometry, whether in metric, we, these are the things that we look for, which are from grade eight, grade nine, which form very important basis. Let's move on. It is important to note that this angle will also be equal to this one. Ah, because this one is equal to this one, therefore this one will be equal to that one. Because are, these two are both equal to this one. Now, these two are vertical opposite angles. But what is the relationship between le, nine e pezum? The relationship between this angle and that angle is that they are alternate angles, alternate. Remember the alternate angles, one must be on this side of the transversal line and the other must be on the other side of the transversal line. So this one is on the side, this one is on the, on the other side. This side and the other side. So this side and the other side. These two are exterior alternate, but these are interior alternate. These are exterior alternate angles, hence these also will be exterior alternate angles. All those that are marked the same, therefore will be equal. So we've just talked about those uh, relationship there. <clears throat> right, remember that we've just mentioned the six types of angles that we know, that we have. If we move further, I'm just talking about lines. Remember where we started, we started in a point, we move on into different types of lines, we join these lines together, they give us an angle, we talked about different types of angles, we move into parallel lines, we see different relationships and angles, the alternate angles, the corresponding angles. It is important to take note that this angle plus this angle are core interior angles, and their sum is equal to 180 degrees. Angle X here and this T here 
will be called interior angles. Likewise, this one and that one are called exterior. And when we add them, they will give us 180 degrees as well. These two, when we add them, they give us 180. They are called exterior angles. These two, when we add them, they, they give us 180 degrees. They are called interior angles. Remember, they call interior. They must be on the same side of the transversal line. They must be in this side, both on the same side. Likewise, these two are called interior angles. When we add them, we get uh, 180 degrees. These two are called exterior. They also give us 180 degrees. Remember, if I move from here to here, it's 180. Back to here, it will be 360 degrees, the revolution. That becomes important. Let's look at these lines again. If I've got this line, I join it to this line. I also join it to this line. Ah, I see something else coming out of line. This is an angle, one. This is another angle, two. This is another angle, three. How many angles do we have there? We've got three angles. Therefore, it is called the tri. Tri means three. Triangles. So it simply means three angles. We've got what we, a figure which we call a triangle. Remember what we said? We said we've got six types of triangles as well. We should never confuse that. Remember, six types of angles, six types of triangles, and six types of quadrilaterals. What are quadrilaterals? Four-sided figures. Let's talk about triangles. We said we've got six types of them. Let's mention them. They are very important in understanding our Euclidean geometry. Without the information, understanding triangles thoroughly, we might have some gaps in our uh, Euclidean geometry. Right. Let us move and look at the six types of triangles that we have. Number one, we've got this type of a triangle. Uh, let's call this the isosceles triangle. We call that the isosceles triangle. What we know about the isosceles triangle is that these two sides must be equal. And as well as these angles here must be equal to that one. Whenever you are told that you've got an isosceles triangle, you must know that we've got two adjacent sides and two base angles which will be equal there. I don't want to put things in a stereotyped uh, position at all times. There's nothing wrong with me putting it in this way and say this side is equal to that. If I put my fingers here and move back, those angles that I will end up to will also be equal. From here, I go there, so these angles are equal. From there, I come down here, so these angles are equal. So my fingers will help me to see which angles are equal. From here, I go straight there, so those will be equal angles. From there, I come down here, so these will be equal angles. In that particular case, remember this angle is called the isosceles tri triangle. There are two important things about it, is that the two sides, if the two sides are equal, Therefore, the two base angles will then be equal to, uh, will, will then be equal. In other words, if this side is equal to this one, this side, therefore the sides opposite it will also be equal. Because these two angles are opposite equal sides. Therefore, they will also be equal. Right. Number two, after the isosceles triangle, I want us to talk about this type of triangle called the equilateral triangle. Equilateral, equilateral. The word lateral means sides. Equi comes from the word equal. So this is a triangle that, called, that has got equal sides. So equilateral means equal sides. So this side is equal to this side. It is equal, equal to that side. From the fact that these two are equal, therefore these two will be the same. So this will be the same as this one. From the fact that these two are so equal, therefore those two will be the same. So it will also be that one. So what, what is it that we see here? We see that all these angles will then be the same. Remember, one thing and one thing only. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle are equal to 180 degrees. All types of triangles. No matter what type of a triangle that is, if I add this angle plus that angle plus that angle, I will always get 180 degrees. So this angle plus this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees. So if all these are equal, what will each angle be then? Each angle then will be equal to 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees. So when you are told that a triangle is an equilateral, you don't have to be told that all sides are equal, that you must know. You don't have to be told that all angles are 60 degrees, that you must know. So once we say it's an equilateral triangle, it implies this information. Number three, we said we've got isosceles, we've got equilateral. Let's talk about the scaling triangle. Scaling triangle. 
This is a triangle which is the opposite to equilateral. So there is nothing equal there, nothing that is equal there. This side is not equal to this, and it is also not equal to that. So likewise, the angles are all not, it's not the same. So that is called the, equi the, the, the scaling triangle. Number four, we move on to another triangle. Remember this, we've got three, then we've got another three. The next three are named according to their angles. Remember, now we know what type of an angle is this. What type of an angle is that? What type of an angle is this? It is an acute angle. But if I close it, I got an acute angled triangle. It is named after its one of its angles. One of its angles is an acute angle. Number five, look, let's look at this angle. <coughs> ah, that angle is an obtuse angle. But if we close it, we do have what we call an obtuse angled triangle. Obtuse angled triangle. This then will be called an obtuse angled triangle. One of its angles must be an obtuse angle. And last but not least, uh, <coughs> we said we've got an isosceles, equilateral, acute angle triangle, scaling triangle, and obtuse angle. Remember, these three will be named according to their angles. Let's look at what type of an angle is this one. What type of an angle is this one? Oh, it's 90 degrees, it's called a right angle. So the triangle that can be formed after the, after, uh, uh, out of that is called a right angle to triangle. This is what we call a right angle triangle. Remember where we started? Your lines are important, your angles and your six types of angles are important, your corresponding angles, your alternate angles, your exterior alternate angles, your 180 degrees is important, your revolution, your 360 becomes important. Uh, the types of lines, I, we talked about that. The six types of triangles, remember three of them are named according to their angles, acute angle triangle, obtuse angle triangle, right angle, scaling, nothing is equal there. Equilateral, equilateral, all sides are equal, and all angles are equal. Remember that the sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Remember isosceles, two opposite sides are the same, as well as the, these base angles will be equal. Thank you.